this section is over inverse functions. And so let's just go ahead and get right into the definition. The definition of an inverse function is basically flip-flopping the coordinates of the ordered pairs. So we switch the x's and the y coordinates, okay? So in this example here, we have g is equal to three different ordered pairs. Well, to find the inverse of g, all we need to do is interchange the x and the y coordinate. So in my first ordered pair, 2 becomes the x and 4 becomes the y. So all we're doing is interchanging them. It's that easy. And so my next is 7, negative 5. And then my last point is negative 9, 3. And so we have just found the inverse of our g function, which was the set of three ordered pairs. Okay, now since we did that, let's go ahead and let's see what's happening to that on the graph. Um, I'm going to draw my G dots or ordered pairs in purple. So I have 4, 2, I have negative 5, 7, and I have 3, negative 9. So those are my three ordered pairs of my original function since I drew in purple. And let me go ahead and draw my inverse of G, meaning I interchange my ordered pairs in red. So I have 2, 4, I have 7, negative 5, and I have negative 9, 3. And this might not be enough to figure out exactly what's happening here, but hopefully you see there's some sort of kind of pattern going on. Well, the pattern basically is, if I were to graph the line of y equals x straight down the middle here, what the inverse function does is it flips the ordered pairs over this line. So here was my original, it flipped it over the line, and there became my inverse. Here was this original, it flipped it over that line, and there became my inverse. Same thing here, original flipped it over the y equals x line, and there becomes my inverse. So that's going to be very important later on. So we know to come up with the inverse, we just interchange the x and the y coordinates. We know the graph of the inverse is just going to be flip-flopping it over this y equals x axis. So let's continue on with some more definitions. The next definition that we have is a one-to-one -one function, and the, the informal definition of this is if different inputs have different outputs and vice versa, meaning different outputs also have to have different inputs. So that means each input has to have its own unique output and vice versa. Each output has to have its own unique input. So if there's ever any duplication across the board, then that means our function is not one-to-one. -one. So let's look at this example down here. We know that the inputs are represented by the first coordinate or by the x's of our ordered pairs. And we know that the outputs are represented by the second coordinate or the y's of our ordered pair. So each x has to have a unique y, and each y has to have a unique x. So if we look at these individual points, there can basically be no duplication across the board. And if I look at it, I see I have an input of 1 here and an input of negative 4 there, but I see that they have repeated outputs. And if anything is ever repeated, that means something is not 1 to 1. So this one is not 1 to 1 to 1 because my 6 repeats. We cannot have any repeats across the board. So just like the last definition, we defined it and then we saw what was actually happening. So let's go ahead and graph these points here. 1, 6, negative 5, negative 3, and negative 4, 6. Now we know this was not one to one because we saw that we had duplicate outputs. Now we need to see how that transforms into this graph. What's causing us problems on this graph? Okay. Well, you might not notice it at this time. Let me go on and do a little bit more work and then if we come back to this, there should be kind of a light bulb, an aha moment. Okay, 
Let's go back and review what we learned earlier, the definition of a function, which is very similar of the definition of one-to-one. -one. The function is the correspondence between the two sets, meaning the relationship between your x-coordinate and your y-coordinate, such that each member of the first set corresponds to exactly one member of the second set. So that means your input or your x values cannot be repeated, but it would be okay if your y coordinates or your range coordinates or your outputs were repeated. And we saw if there ever was a y coordinate repeated, then it was not a function. And the easiest way to do that if we had a graph was the vertical line test. So if we could draw a vertical line through our graph and if it intersects our graph more than once, then it would be not a function. So if I have these examples here, we see the very right one that I have. This one is not a function because I could draw a vertical line through it, and it intersects our graph more than once. So this one is no, not a function. Now, any other one of these graphs, they are functions because I can draw vertical lines in many different places, and they would never intersect our graph more than once. So those are functions. Okay, this translates into a horizontal line test if we're looking for a function is one-to-one. -one. So if it's a function, we first say that it has to pass the vertical line test. If it's a one-to-one, -one, it also has to pass the horizontal line test. And it works the exact same way the vertical line test does. If I can draw a horizontal line and it intersects my graph more than once, then my function is not one-to-one. -one. So looking at these same graphs here, okay, if I were to look at my first graph and draw a horizontal line through it, I see that it intersects the graph at three different places. So this is then not a one-to-one -one function. Okay, if I look here in the middle, I can draw a graph I can draw a horizontal line in multiple places, and it doesn't intersect the graph more than once. And so this is, yes, it's one, two, one. If I look at my third graph here on the right, you might start drawing horizontal lines to determine whether it is one-to-one -one or not. But we're not just looking for one-to-one, -one, we're also looking if it is a function. Well, we found before that this is not a function because it doesn't pass the vertical line test. So if it doesn't pass the vertical line test, that means it's not a function, which means it's definitely not a one-to-one -one function as well. So now is the perfect time to go back to the dots that we had graphed earlier in our first example, and we wanted to see how does this relate in determining whether our graph is a one-to-one -one function. Well, we see that we have two points lined up next to each other, and if I were to graph a horizontal line through these points, I would see that I would intersect them both. So this is the visual representation to tell you that your graph is not a one-to-one -one function. Okay, that was the informal definition. Let's go ahead and look at the formal definition of a one-to-one -one function. So this is the math definition. If a function is one-to-one, -one, then again, different inputs have to have different outputs. That means if your x value, so these here are your x values, if you have two x values that are not the same, such as a and b, or pick any two x values that aren't the same, then your f of a and your f of b cannot be the same. So again, it cannot be duplicates. Or a different way to say this is, again, if it's one-to-one -one and the outputs are the same, then the inputs must also be the same. So if my, again, these are represented by the y values, if my y values are equivalent, that means our x values must be equivalent as well. Depending on whatever you're trying to do with this, one of these might be easier than the other one. That's why I'm going to stop this video. In the next video, I'm going to come back and review this definition, and we're actually going to use it in some examples to prove whether a function is or isn't one-to-one.